Revs are rising. Green lights and go. Good start then from Godfrey. Great start from Toehill. Not bad from Hill on the outside of the front row. O'Donovan looks for an opportunity as he comes to drive through on the inside of Hill, but it's Toehill with the advantage over Godfrey. Down Duffers Dip into turn one. Steve Hill's out wide onto the painted part of the kerb, and he drops down to fourth position as a result of that. So it's Toehill that leads the way through the gravel section. It's very much one at a time coming through here because it's so tight and so twisty and very fast and frenetic in these super cars as well. So O'Donovan then makes some ground and is now right on the back of Julian Godfrey. Godfrey goes joker as does O'Donovan at the end of lap one. So those two following the same strategy. Not ideal there for O'Donovan because that means he's going to have to pass Julian Godfrey on track here now. And we know how uh, that worked out with himself and Robert Spittles in Q1 earlier on today. Steve Hill also going joker as well at the end of the first lap. So Derek Tohill, the only driver who has not made his joker. Big old lock up on the front there for Julian Godfrey as he tries to get the Citroen DS3 slowed down. That'll be flat spotting his Cooper tyres. And that won't be helpful at all for him in terms of the grip. And it'll probably be vibrating like a dentist chair after this one as well. So off the gravel section then comes Derek Tohill at the end of lap two. He goes joker then has got a clear advantage it was 7.9 seconds at the checkered flag last time around and if he's been able to hold his pace with a lovely line through that joker as well he should be able to hold on to his race lead as he emerges onto the start finish straight and you can see that he is comfortably now ahead of Julian Godfrey for second position so masterful strategy there from Derek Tohill and phenomenal pace from the Irishman has worked out beautifully then for him as all he has to do now is keep it on the straight and narrow because a two second gap between himself and Julian Godfrey is going to be a very hard task even for a six time British champion to overcome. You can see in the background there that Ollie O'Donovan's not too far adrift of Julian Godfrey there as well. So let's keep an eye on that and see if that gap decreases over the duration of this one and see whether O'Donovan is going to be able to do anything to get himself past Julian Godfrey. It didn't help when O'Donovan took that early joker following Godfrey there through. Maybe he'd have benefited from running in clean air for a lap or maybe he just doesn't have the pace underneath him here today. That's always something to consider. And you can see the gap has increased a little bit now between Godfrey and O'Donovan up to one and a half seconds as they start the final lap. So whatever O'Donovan has done to his car overnight, if he's changed the setup, it's not working out at all for him so far in Q2 here at Knock Hill because he's going to finish third on the road. And I have a sneaking suspicion that Q2 race two coming up just after this one will be a little bit faster than these guys out on track as well. So Derek Tohill comes through the final corner over the line to take the win in Q2 race one here at Knock Hill from Julian Godfrey and then Ollie O'Donovan in third position. It's going to be Steve Hill who concludes the four drivers taking the chequered flag in the supercars. That's Q2 race one. On the way next is Q2 race two problems for Julian Godfrey on the slowdown lap. There was a fire with this car yesterday in practice for Mark Donnelly and sadly it's reared its ugly head at the end of Q2 race one here for the six-time champion. He's taken over that car here today from Donnelly after Donnelly opted to sit this round out and you can see the car billowing smoke from the front of it. I would imagine there is going to be a fair old delay as a result of this because of course the marshals and the safety team here now need to make sure that there's no oil that's been dropped off. Regardless, that is possibly going to be the end of Godfrey's weekend here. He had technical problems with his Ford Fiesta, and sadly, they've reared his ugly head in a car that he wasn't even supposed to be driving here this weekend. So that's two cars in two days for Julian Godfrey, which is not a rate of attrition that anybody would envy at all. And let's hope that it's not a terminal problem and the team can get the car fixed. But dear, oh dear, Julian Godfrey, you've got to feel for him and you've got to feel for Mark Donnelly as well. That's his car that obviously he's not driving out on track here. And as such, well, I think he's going to be a bit disappointed as a result of that. And I'm sure there'll be a fair old amount of work to do to get that car ready in time for Lydon Hill on the uh, first weekend of November.